Okay, so welcome everybody. Today we're going to be discussing cranial electrotherapy stimulation or CES for anxiety and insomnia specifically. I'm going to get things rolling. I've been excited to give this presentation for a long time now and uh, the time is finally here. We'll talk more about that and some of the reasons we had to put this off just a bit. But here we are, cranial electrotherapy stimulation or CES. So we're going to begin by just touching a little bit on anxiety and insomnia. And I don't want to dwell on the negative, but as practitioners and healers, we do need to understand the magnitude of the problem and what we're up against. So here we go. Uh, anxiety disorders, of course, the most common mental illness in the United States. I think that many of us are probably aware of this. Um, about 19% of the adult population affected, um, and 25% of the children, the population of children. Um, and it's one of the most undertreated mental disorders. A lot of people simply suffer. They don't get the help that they need. Um, and even when they do seek help, unfortunately, some of the treatment um, options are not necessarily all that effective. We're kind of limited. There's anti-anxiety meds, which, um, you know, come with their own slate of side effects and may not be as effective as we would like. Um, but it also has a lot of other comorbidities. Anxiety um, produces a lot of other problems. Uh, you can see the bullet point there, three to five times more likely to go to the doctor six times more likely to be hospitalized for psychiatric disorders than those who don't suffer from an anxiety disorder. Um, there are several different anxiety disorders that fall under the umbrella, as uh, we're probably aware. Generalized anxiety disorder, panic, social anxiety disorder, specific phobias, and a whole slate of those, OCD, PTSD, um, all are under the umbrella of anxiety disorders. So it covers quite a broad range. Sleep disorders are also strongly associated with anxiety disorders. Um, according to NIH, uh, more than 40 million Americans suffer from chronic, not just, uh, you know, kind of um, momentary sleep issues, but uh, chronic long-term sleep disorders. Um, 20 million report occasional sleeping problems, and nearly all psychiatric disorders include some form of sleep disorder, sleep disruption with them. Um, these, of course, lead to all sorts of other problems, uh, poor work performance, school performance, increased risk of injury, accident, and um, anxiety disorders and sleep disorders kind of feed one another. When you're suffering from insomnia, it contributes to anxiety, and the anxiety then contributes to insomnia. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle, and a, a good way to break that cycle is something that's really desperately needed by a lot of patients. There's also higher risk. Uh, with sleep disorders, you have higher risks of a lot of other problems, heart disease, heart failure, irregular heartbeat, heart attack. Notice that all of these things seem to be heart-related. Um, from a uh, Chinese medicine perspective, disturbance of the Shen can lead to a lot of these um, issues with the heart. I don't know why my slides won't advance with my keyboard. That's okay. So curious what you've noticed, particularly with what's gone on with COVID and the outcome and the results of the pandemic and how it has affected your patient population. Uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of practitioners who've pointed out that they've noticed it, that they've seen an uptick in their practice. They've seen more people struggling with anxiety, particularly as a result of COVID. So I'm going to highlight several populations and some of the studies that have been done, uh, starting with uh, young adults. Um, during the pandemic, uh, a larger than average percentage of young adults report symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorders, 56%. Uh, um, compared to all adults, young adults are more likely to report 
substance use, suicidal thoughts. And this is a population that was already at higher risk of mental health and substance abuse. Um, the pandemic has simply made things worse, uh, along with, I think, the specific issues that people have had to deal with, with isolation and uh, perhaps loss of job, perhaps closure of schools, uh, lack of social interaction, all of those things. But there's a broader notion that it takes away people's hope. And when you're a young adult, you're already struggling to find your footing. You're already struggling to do the adult thing. It's very hard when it appears that the future is bleak and you have to question, what am I trying to work for anyway? So it's been really tough on this age group. And maybe you've noticed this in your practice. If you look at the age ranges, you can see the, uh, the share per age range. And the older you are, then the less you tend to suffer with these problems. But it's still, even in the upper age ranges, it's still a very significant amount of the population suffering from anxiety and or depressive disorders during the COVID-19 pandemic. So even at the high, range, high age ranges, it's still uh, you know, a third or more of the adult population. Women are harder hit. Um, possibly uh, women with children um, being the, the primary driver of that, more likely to report symptom, symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder than men with children. And uh, both prior to and during the pandemic, the female population tends to have higher rates of anxiety and depression compared to men. And so here it is graphically um, during, as reported during the pandemic, broken down by gender. Uh, people of color disproportionately affected. Um, and rather than uh, reading the percentages, I think it's easier to just see it in this chart that where if you take all adults together, you kind of have this 42% range. And then depending on race and, ethnic, race and ethnicity, you have increased effects and increased reported symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder in um, non-white populations and non-Asian populations. So then when we take all adults who say that worry or stress related to coronavirus has had a negative impact on mental health based on whether or not there was a shelter in place order and sheltering in place has a marked negative impact on mental health. Uh, humans, we seem to be designed to interact with one another, to need that social interaction. Uh, we don't do well sheltering in place. And then uh, a different study reporting the average share of adults reporting uh, symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder January through June of 2019 versus January of 2021. And you can see uh, a marked increase pre and post COVID. So that's enough of the negative. Like I said, I don't want to dwell on that. I want to dwell on the positive and some really great things that we can do to help our patients. Now, there are some nice things that we can do with acupuncture, with auricular therapy. We've talked about these in a prior webinar. Today, we're focusing specifically on cranial electrical stimulation, but I do want to point out that CES can be used in conjunction with the other modalities and approaches that we use and should be used in conjunction with them. I think it's very much worthwhile to provide anything and everything that may be helpful. So CES, uh, for those who may not be familiar with it, it's an FDA cleared treatment for anxiety and insomnia. It has actually been FDA cleared for depression as well. Although the FDA is um, uh, waffling on that just a bit and kind of increasing the pressure on the depression side of things, I don't know what political forces, uh, what financial forces, et cetera, may be involved in all of that. I do know that um, 
obviously there's there's billions and billions of dollars in pharmaceuticals sold for these conditions. So today we're specifically talking about anxiety and insomnia, but we will run up against some of the other effects that CES has, including on depression, on addiction, other mental health disorders. Um, I just wanted to point out the, uh, the FDA status. And in order to stay resolutely on the good side of the FDA regulatory structure, we're specifying anxiety and insomnia as indications today. So wanted to make that clear. Uh, CES, it's uh, using precisely tuned, subtle electrical impulses designed to stimulate specific parts of the brain and to cause the brain to revert to a homeostasis, a more normal functioning, more normal levels of neurotransmitters. And um, it promotes uh, a number of positive neurotransmitters, decreases cortisol, stress hormone. So it's got a lot of positive effects that we'll talk more about. Now, anytime you start talking about putting electricity into the brain, uh, obviously the FDA is not the only person that's concerned and uh, anybody is um, probably wondering, is this safe, is this effective, is this good? What do we know about this, has it been studied? And so the purpose of the webinar today is to answer all of those questions. Uh, to begin with, I do wanna point out that the currents that are used are similar to those occurring naturally in the brain. They're subsensory, meaning that you don't often feel the actual electrical stimulation. And on most CES devices, the user can control the level so they can turn it down to where it's comfortable or where it's not even felt at all, and it is still effective. Uh, it works with the brain's natural function rather than against it. It's not an anti-anything. It's not antagonistic, but instead it's just promoting proper function. Non-habit forming, um, it does not stimulate beyond homeostasis. So it's nice. It's kind of like acupuncture where when you treat with acupuncture, the body will use what it can use, but you're not going to push somebody beyond that. This is uh, much <laughs> So a brief history of the idea of stimulating the brain with electricity that's not involved in, in campy horror films from the 1930s. Um, so there were two French doctors, uh, Leduc and Rousseau in France uh, in 1902, studying what they called electrosleep. And electrosleep was the term that was coined because by putting certain strong electrical currents through the brain, you would actually induce anesthesia, general anesthesia. You would put somebody to sleep. And it wasn't natural sleep. It was an induced sleep. And it remained until you turned off the power. And then they would wake up again. But this was an interesting field of study back then. Uh, because Golly, the idea that you can electrically put somebody right to sleep was, was a fascinating uh, implication for a lot of things, including, well, golly, will this work for surgery? Will this work for insomnia? Will this work for people that have other mental disorders? Obviously, the studies, um, the interest kind of uh, wrote itself. There was something called ECT, electroconvulsive therapy introduced in the 1930s for depression and psychosis. And you may have heard of ECT, uh, perhaps the more pejorative term, electroshock therapy. This is high levels of current. Um, it generally would actually cause people to lose consciousness. And the notion was that it would be used for really difficult mental health disorders, for depression and psychosis. It's been experimented with uh, for a lot of other things through the years. It's certainly fallen out of favor and ECT or electroshock therapy um, generally not used, not promoted, and it's certainly not something that we're promoting. Um, but all of these early experiments kind of contribute to what we know now about what is the right kind of current, what is the right kind of electrical stimulation for the brain. Um, in the Soviet Union, they began experimenting with CES in the 1950s using the much smaller, much more biologically compatible currents that we use now. 
Uh, in the 1970s, something called electroanesthesia was experimented with, keeping patients asleep as long as current was on and attempting to use this as a form of anesthesia. Uh, Kirsch in 2002 published a bibliography listing 126 human studies, 29 animal studies. Um, most of them were double blind and conducted at American universities. Total of 6,000 plus patients treated under varying research conditions with about 4,500 receiving actual CES. So my point here is that this has a long history. Um, people have been studying this for over 100 years. Um, in terms of good quality published studies, there are a lot of them out there. Now, the mechanisms is something that is still being studied. Um, there's direct action uh, on the brain at the level of the limbic system, reticular activating system, or the hypothalamus. Um, there are several studies listed there. And these structures, by the way, in the brain were all originally mapped using electrical stimulation. These are all uh, obviously electrically active areas of the brain and affected by electrical stimulation. Also, you get posterior alpha power increases the amplitude and symmetry of alpha produced in alpha waves produced in raw EEG study there showed that stimulation of the hypothalamus and or pituitary due to studies showing increase in thyroxine catecholamines and 17 ketosteroids. Um, 42 to 46% of the current actually enters the brain. So taking the current that is placed on the, on the surface of the skin and measuring how much is actually getting into the targeted areas of the brain, you find that somewhere between 40 and 45% roughly reaches the limbic region deep in the brain. So it is actually getting in there and, and doing things. Um, increased blood plasma levels of beta endorphin, adrenocorticotropic hormone, serotonin, melatonin, norepinephrine, and cholinesterase, and decreased cortisol levels. Uh, FMRI studies showing um, cortical deactivation changes similar to what you would see with anxiolytic medications. Uh, EEG studies show increased alpha activity, which we mentioned, decreased delta activity, decreased beta activity. So a lot of proposed mechanisms, a lot of studies being done, and there's no definitive mechanism yet. So the real question for us as practitioners though is, but does it work? Can we get the results we're looking for for our patients in our practice? And so for the remainder of the presentation, we're gonna kind of focus on that. And we'll, uh, we'll pause and, at, and answer questions in a couple of minutes here. Um, so if you have questions, then um, be ready with them. But here's a few things in kind of real world results. Here's a study that was done for depression and the response above placebo or the effectively effect efficacy above placebo for depression. And as you can see, um, it handily beat the uh, typical antidepressants. Um, so it sh that study showed more effective than medication, uh, two to six times more effective than antidepressants, virtually no side effects, unlike the medications, which are known to cause side effects. Um, then with anxiety disorders, you can see the effectiveness, the percent improvement for various anxiety disorders. Um, Again, much better than what you would find with medications. And then here's a meta-analysis published studies. So studies on insomnia showing effectiveness. So the lowest, the mean, and the highest effectiveness for insomnia, for depression, for anxiety, in the cases of addictions, and then for cognitive effects meaning uh, cognitive improvement, ability to process information. But in all of these cases, even if you look at the lowest reported numbers, the red numbers here, you see that you have some 
significant effectiveness rates. The highest reported numbers are, of course, um, strongly encouraging. And I like the idea that we can look at both the lowest and the highest reports in, in these meta-analysis studies to show us exactly what we're looking at. The number of studies, by the way, shown in the parentheses at the bottom of the chart. Then uh, recidivism among substance abusers. Um, CES treatment on a, in a US government survey after six years show without CES. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why that is showing the percentages. I apologize. My chart is defective here. Uh, the point is that you had a much lower recidivism rate among people with substance abuse disorders. In, in various studies, they're, they're each labeled by where the study was done. Two-year studies in Washington and Dallas and an eight-year study in London, all showing that CES um, greatly reduced recidivism in addiction disorders. Um, some other study results, lowered readings on electromyograms, improvements in electroencephalograms, reduced anxiety, increased vasodilation, reductions in gastric acid output, uh, reductions in blood pressure, pulse rate, respiration, and heart rate, reductions in clinical depression. All of these studying outcomes that are clinically useful rather than merely chemical outcomes in a blood test. So the device that I like and that I've used for nearly a decade is called the CES Ultra. I like it for several reasons. Uh, first of all, it's very effective, very handy, very easy to use and very well priced. And so to me, that's the bullseye. It hits the sweet spot for everything that the device should be and everything that it should do. Um, this device has been around for over 15 years. Very simple and easy to use. It's got a timer. That's you push the button for how long you want it. And it's got a dial for intensity. That's it. Clip it to the ears and you're ready to go. Um, it's reliable, well-built, safe. My personal unit I've had for almost 10 years now, and it still works perfectly, no problem. Also, it provides the correct frequency, the frequency that's used in um, over 85% of the studies that we've been talking about is 100 hertz for the frequency, and that's the frequency that the CES Ultra provides. I know that there's other units on the market, and I don't have anything negative to say about them, I do uh, appreciate the fact, however, that this one does use that frequency. So here are the actual specs for the CES Ultra. Runs on a, a simple nine volt battery. Uh, square wave, pulse duration is two milliseconds or a 20% duty cycle, 100 Hertz frequency. And then you can run it for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or continuous use. And it's very simple, you clip it on, set it for say 30 minutes and then relax, read a book, watch TV. Most effective, particularly for if you're treating insomnia, it's most effective a few hours before bedtime. So something perhaps right after dinner, you do the treatment and by bedtime, uh, you're ready for sleep. We'll talk more about uh, insomnia, but here's the, the specific, um, method of use. You can use it once or twice daily. Wow, we've got a lot of people still coming in. <laughs> um, use it three or four hours before bedtime if you're treating insomnia. You can use it while relaxing. You can use it while working. You can be sitting at your desk working. You can be walking around doing housework. Um, or you can be in a, in a state of relaxation, maybe breathing or meditating. It's totally up to you. It's portable enough that you can use it in almost any situation. I will say that I have more than one of us here at Meridia that use it during working hours uh, at work. Um, some results are immediate and some results are cumulative. Insomnia, for example, tends to be uh, a little bit all over the map. Some people respond immediately first day. Some people have increasing improvement over the course of a couple of months, but uh, it's, not, it's very uncommon that we don't see a positive effect. And so we encourage people to try it more than once, you know, stick with it, 
make it a regular habit and start to notice the changes, even keep track. If you're working with something like insomnia, keep track of sleep quality, sleep duration, how easy it was to go to sleep and see if you're seeing the gradual changes because most often you will be. Um, <clears throat> there's some evidence that CES provides stimulation to the vagus nerve, which has a number of positive effects. I'm not going to go into that a lot today, other than if that's something that you're interested in, it's certainly worth looking into CES for that. Real life story, I'll tell you, um, this is my daughter, Kara, who is um, now an employee here. And during the summer of 2020, she started to suffer from really debilitating insomnia. And, uh, you know, as her dad, I know firsthand how hard this was for her. Um, night after night after night of not being able to sleep or, or getting an hour or two, if she was lucky, waking up and waking up multiple times, just drifting off and then jolting awake. And then the anxiety that came with that, the fear, because here it is, it's nighttime again, I'm supposed to be sleeping. Oh, what if I can't, I'm not going to be able to. And having all of this fear built up, this anxiety built up, which fed the insomnia. And this went on for weeks and it was terrible. And what made the difference for her was using the CES Ultra, which I told you I've had one for many years. It's not something I was in the habit of using recently because I wasn't experiencing any symptoms. I was doing fine. So I wasn't worried about it, but remembered that we had this and said, oh, wait a minute, this is something that might help. We should have you using this. And she was one of those who started to see effects almost right away. And as she began using it, she began being able to sleep and it literally kind of turned the corner very quickly for her after weeks of terrible debilitating insomnia within a few days she was in almost normal sleep pattern and she's continued to use it now um, when she's having problems or concerns about sleep she continues to use it continues to have good results and so that one kind of hits close to home for me but dr kimberly who's been using this in her practice is going to share some of her cases from her practice and then we're going to take some questions right after Dr. Kimberly's done. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and give you the opportunity to share yours and uh, show us what you've got for us today. Sure. So um, I'll give you a little bit of background on why I, I developed a program in my clinic and the reason behind that was after COVID and patients started coming back, they were coming back with more extreme symptoms. So if, if they would normally come in for pain and then I was treating them, they now had pain and anxiety and insomnia. They, and, and just the normal acupuncture visit wasn't quite enough. I had, I had new patients that I had not experienced before. I had, you know, middle-aged men with PTSD. I had, I had teenagers. I had all of these people with this, this anxiety added to everything that they had going on. And so when we, when Dr. Larson introduced the device, um, it was at a time when I was still at home and my my clinic was barely running. Um, I wasn't treating a lot of patients, but the first thing that I did was try it on myself. I was, I'm like, okay, you've told me the research. It sounds good, but what does it feel like? And what do I do? Uh, how is it going to work on myself? That's always sort of the, the experiment that I put things through. I try it on myself and I want to know if it changes the graph because changing the graph is important to me. So I tried it on myself and my husband at home. I graphed us first, uh, we used it. And without doing any other treatment, um, we had graph changes. 
and they weren't extreme, extreme, but they were changes and they were changes in the positive direction. So that's how I began trying it out. And then um, I began adding it on a few patients with acupuncture involved. Um, I was treating with acupuncture and having them use the device and the results were like, I was dumbfounded. I was, I was amazed at what great results I was getting. So I decided to um, develop a program and I did it sort of as a testing ground. I took 15 patients and um, if they fit the criteria of anxiety, insomnia and pain or some combination of the three, then I decided to um, utilize the program. And I, it was a six week program and I'm gonna share some of the results with you um, about with these patients. So, okay, I wanna tell you about um, this guy. This guy was a patient who came in and he had PTSD and his wife heard about the program and she signed him up. And when he came in, he, um, he wasn't functioning in his home. He wasn't functioning in his life. He wasn't functioning in the world. He had been overseas. Um, their, their family had come back from out of the country. And while they were out of the country, they had had an event that was, um, somebody came in and robbed their home. And while they were robbed, he, he experienced such anxiety that he was overwhelmed with his PTSD. Then when COVID hit and the stresses of COVID, his PTSD was exacerbated. And so with that, he just didn't know which way to turn. I'm gonna show you his graph here for a second. And let's go to his patient file. Um, when he first came in on his first visit, he, he said that his sleep was about a five out of 10. His anxiety was extreme, eight out of 10. And his well being was six out of 10. And he came in on January 20th. So let me go back here to the patient file. And this is what his graph looked like when he came in. So I, I graphed him, I treated him in the clinic, and then I sent him home with the device. So to give a little more background, my program included acupuncture, Chinese herbs, and self-treatment at home in between time. And so I treated him at the beginning. This was his graph. I chose an herbal formula for him his formula was a Bujong Yichi Tang. And um, when he came back on his second visit, we'll go back in time. Here he was on his first visit. When he came back on his second visit, he had almost a green graph. And this was three weeks later. The thing that was happening was the initial acupuncture visit to balance his body and then the Chinese herbs to balance his TCM pattern. And then he was using the device twice a day at home. And this was his results. When he came in on his third visit, um, this is what his graph looked like. But the comparison was absolutely phenomenal um, when you look at where he started and where he ended. So this guy here, um, he, this was the only thing he came into the treatment, into the clinic for. And I didn't have, I, I didn't have previous um, graphing experience on him and I'm not seeing him further. He only came in the three times, um, but his wife was just in yesterday and it was interesting that he told me, she told me 
yesterday, she said he is doing so much better. He has great energy. He's happy. He gets up, he interacts with the world. And I think that the story that hit me with him was when he came in um, on his third visit and we were kind of closing off this program. He said to me, you know, I was able to go with my daughter and go have lunch with her in a restaurant yesterday where I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was in my extreme anxiety because noises around me would have triggered me. So it was, it was fun to hear his story. Um, and I was get noteworthy was he thought it was very comfortable when he put it on and he, his advice for, um, he does a lot of PTSD type of um, emotional support programs. And it was his opinion that this could be life-changing for some people if they did this program. So three visits, one and done, and he was happy and he was good. The next person that I want to tell you about is, um, is a widow and she i'm gonna bring her i'm gonna play here she experiences extreme um i had been treating her before her husband passed away and as we went through the journey with her and her pain was her normal issue and but with the anxiety of COVID and the anxiety after her husband passed away and it was winter and she was stuck at home and she was going through this, um, through this experience all on her own without any help and without any support. And she was grieving and she was alone as I, um, Sorry, let me get, let's go back to my widow. Let's go here. So she, um, when she, it was interesting because I was already treating her as a patient. So she came in in December and we're going to look at her graphs, December, January, and February. So let's go back in time. So in December, so when she came in December, this is what her graph looked like. And this was before I introduced the program. I introduced it in January. She then came in January and her graph was still out of balance. And I told her about the program. And I decided that, um, that this would be a good fit for her. And when she came in, in, I had introduced it to her in January and she didn't, she didn't accept the program at that point. And then in February, I just sat down with her and I said, you know, I really think this program would be good for you because we weren't getting great results on her graph. We weren't getting good progress. She, her anxiety, her pain, her insomnia, um, she just, she couldn't even, she couldn't even get to sleep at night. So after I entered, sent her home with the device, this was um, the day I introduced it, her next graph, when she came in, she was blown away. And then um, we got great results on her. She now is... Um, the program is over and she just comes in for her wellness checkups and we're getting extremely great graphs. Um, some of the noteworthy, noteworthy quotes from her once that, that one, that one time between the first visit when she took the device home and when she came back the next time, she is, she was just amazed. She said, it's amazing how much better you can function when you sleep. Lovely. Lovely. And um, she said, she, I feel so rested. This is a foreign feeling for me. And she said, even my back pain has improved. So I had been treating her back pain 
for months and months. But now because we included the device along with the herbs and the acupuncture, that's how we got the amazing results. Her herbal formula was on Shen Bushin Tong. Um, go to the reference section and herbs and heart. So this particular formula for her was um, to harmonize the heart and kidney. And that was where her imbalance was specifically. And so it was the combination of the three that got her great results. The next patient um, is the trifecta. This patient here was a, let's go to her. This person was a 51 year old woman. She, when she first started coming to me, she came to me because of extreme panic attacks and, um, and pain. Pain is what brought her in. And then when she explained her panic attacks and insomnia, so I introduced her to the program as well. And it was interesting to me, she was in this transitional stage of her life. She was menopause, she couldn't sleep at night. And the quote that really hit me, she said she went to bed that night and at six o'clock in the morning, she was still wide awake and not able to sleep. When she came in on January 26, um, when she came in on her very next visit, she had a perfectly green graph and she was blown away with treatment. So we went from January 26 to February 16th to May 4th. And this was her six week program. And what's amazing about these results are she continues to get green graphs. And all she's doing is coming in for a once a month visit. And it is the treatment that she is doing at home that is really making, uh, making the great results. And other noteworthy fun, fun thing to recognize here, by her, um, her hot flashes are doing better. She's lost a couple of pounds and she has been, been able to go and get a new job along the way. So just amazing, phenomenal changes that were able to happen in her life. And then let me tell you about my final comparison because you know we, we, treat, we treat patients in our clinic but sometimes we wind up treating our family members. And this is my son. During COVID, he, um, he lived alone in an apartment and he was stuck behind closed doors and anxiety just overtook him. He was um, living out of state. He didn't have any family members around. And post COVID, he wound up coming back here to live closer to home and be near family members. And he, he was back into his life. We were all back into work, but he called me one day and he said, mom, something is wrong. My heart is beating really fast and I'm having a hard time breathing. And I just, I'm sad, I'm depressed. I don't wanna to go to work. And so that really hit me hard and I, the program was new and I was just beginning. And I said, Hey, come to my clinic. I think I have something that can help you. And as I share his graph with you and his story, it has been amazing to see the changes that have happened in his life since he has um, been in the program. I've named him CES Manchild. Let's take a look here. So um, I had him on two herbal formulas. He was on Bujong Yichitong and Free and Easy Wander, which is a Xiao Yao San. And if you go back to his first graph, this is what he looked like. You could see um, 
excess in the upper body, deficient in the lower body. He had been experiencing a lot of anxiety. So I treated him. I sent him home with a device and asked him to use it twice a day. And when he came back three weeks later, this is what his graph looked like. And um, that boy cried again. He said, mom, I feel so much better. I can't even tell you. Um, my sleep is better. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm functioning at work. And this was his final graph in the program. And he, everything changed. Everything changed for him. So I'm really excited um, about what has been happening for patients in this program. And this is just four, four examples that I've given you. Uh, this is happening over and over again. Um, I'm, it's turned into a family device for many patients. The one person will start using it and it's being shared amongst family members. And I'm, I'm excited to where it's going next because I'm now expanding beyond anxiety and insomnia and recognizing the value of uh, the vagus nerve stimulation for other types of conditions. But actually, let me show you one more thing because here's, here's my why. Um, if you, here's why it works. If you take every one of these acupuncture pathways and you look at the internal pathway for each one, um, the lung, the large intestine, and, and you go all the way through each of the internal pathways, this is where the vagus nerve goes. So when you are using the CES Ultra, you are helping any acupuncture treatment that you are doing. I have... Um, I have used it while I'm treating. Uh, that's usually an introduction if the patient has been coming for a while. Um, and I, I feel like the CES Ultra would be a good addition to their life, then I will add it to the treatment. They love it. It's very, it's a, it's a small tickle on the ear. They find that their acupuncture treatment is deeper and more relaxing. And um, the results that they find when they get home have just been phenomenal. And the final point on that is once they're done with the program and things are regulated, they have this device that they can use at home that they can self-regulate and self-treat as they need, need help along the way. And it hasn't taken away my patients. They still come back for their wellness. I've taught them how important acupuncture is. So it's just been a bonus all the way around. Awesome information, Dr. Kimberly. Thank you so much for sharing those. And um, I'm <laughs> delighted, uh, particularly uh, with you sharing the results about your son. Um, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a young man that I know and that I really like and think the world of, and I'm glad that he's doing so much better. Um, I see there's a lot of questions that have come in. so. I'm going to take a minute and answer the questions that are in the chat. If you have questions, feel free to go ahead and type them in there or raise your hand. We then we'll uh, we'll finish up uh, after the questions. We'll tell you a little bit about how you can get these devices and what the what the story is there. Um, so somebody says, any comment on research comparing hallucinogens versus CES? I've personally not seen any research on that. I know hallucinogens are a hot topic right now, a hot area of research. And I don't know that there are any comparative studies yet, but uh, maybe there are, and I'm just not aware. Um, Sue asks, is this available for the general public to purchase? Yes, it is with prescription. And we'll talk about how that works and we'll actually show you what you can do there. Um, next question. Um, does it interfere with other treatments? Um, it depends on what treatment. The general answer is no. There are some contraindications. You obviously don't want to use this, say, if the patient has an implanted electrical device like a pacemaker. Um, and later on, somebody asked, uh, if somebody is on meds for anxiety, depression, et cetera, psychoactive 
uh, medications, should they discontinue those? Um, the answer is absolutely not, unless the, they, they get the advice of a medical professional that prescribed the meds, because um, A, it would be outside of our scope of practice for most of us to suggest such a thing, but B, uh, some of those have to be tapered properly. You can put your patient in a lot of danger by telling them to not take their meds. So uh, never do that. Leave that to the, the prescribing physician. Dr. Larson, can I yeah. add to that? Please. Um, there are studies to show that if someone is taking medications and they're using the CES device, it actually um, helps the medications to work better. So they're getting better effects. Yeah. So it's not contraindicated. If they're on meds, they can still use this. It's not going to interfere right. with the meds. Uh, can it trigger seizures? Cheryl asks. I've not seen reports of it triggering seizures. Um, obviously, if you have a, an epileptic patient or a patient that is um, prone toward seizures, you would want to monitor that very carefully. Uh, if someone is anxious during any situation, would this help to calm them during that time? For an example, at the dental office, Michelle asked that question. That's a great question. The calming effects tend to be cumulative with use. It's not like an instant um, turn it on and oh, zone out and you're in bliss. Although for some people it does function that way. So it would really be something I'd I would, worth a try. I, I would like to add to that. I have had patients who are in anxiety while they're on the treatment table and especially patients who they already know acupuncture visits and then they try their acupuncture visit with the CES Ultra completely changes everything. They go into a deeper state of relaxation. And you, you know how you have some of those patients who can explain every little change that happens in their body when they're having acupuncture. I have had people explain that they feel it at the top of the head and then they feel it through their head all the way down through their heart and through their body. So I have found um, almost immediate results um, with that. And then I also wanted to say that I, as, as far as triggering seizures, I have a woman who has a neurological disorder that sometimes when you touch certain areas of her body, she develops a tick. And when she's using the CES Ultra during treatment, she doesn't get that tick. So I just thought I would throw that out there from clinical experience. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Suzette asks, where does the rest of the current go if only 42 to 48% goes to the brain? Um, and then how does it correlate to the nausea frequencies used for the brain area? Okay, so first question, where does the rest of the current go? Since you're applying current to the surface of the skin, some of it spreads out in the skin, some of it simply encounters resistance. Um, there's a notion in electricity called resistance that only allows a portion of the current to pass through. And that's, so you lose some to resistance, uh, you lose some to the interface with the skin but the fact that, that such a high percentage does make it into the brain is notable because that's what's having the effect. And if it were all just being dissipated on the skin, then we wouldn't be able to point to it and say, no, 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 you are electric, is electrically stimulating the brain. Um, the other question she said, how does this correlate to the nausea frequencies used for the brain area? Well, there are several frequencies Nogier had, you know, regarding the brain area and or various structures in the brain. And um, what I'm doing right now while I'm talking is I'm pulling up my copy of Auriculo 360 so that we can overlay and then look at the brain. And uh, I'll put it up on the screen in just a second here. Okay, so um, let me share my screen. This is a, a fun little unintended diversion, but it's the kind of thing I like. Okay, so looking at Auriculo 360 here, we've got our, our three-dimensional ear and I pulled up the brain point. The brain point in general is in the area that electrically is 4.6 or rounded to five hertz. And then there's other areas like the brain stem area, which is back here in the 36.5 hertz area. 
brain stem point back here where we were. So there are a variety of points depending on um, which structure in the brain you're dealing with. If we go back to the interactive ear and we look at the corpus callosum, that's in a very specific area, a very specific frequency uh, of 2.3 hertz, for example, and it's the only point that's in there. So there's not a high degree of correlation with the specific frequencies that Nogier used, um, particularly because this is a 100 hertz frequency, but Nogier's frequencies were affecting and treating a different system, a different approach. So that's the best I can comment there, but uh, it is an interesting question and I appreciate you bringing that up, Suzette. I, I, I will just share a little ex aha experience I had yesterday because my experiences just keep growing day by day, but I had had somebody with um, the device on and after I needled them, I had some belly points um, with needles in it, like liver 14, and I recognized that there was a tiny, I wasn't adding electricity to the body except through the ear. And that needle was very vibrating ever so slightly. I took a video of it uh, just for fun, but um, it was fun to see the effect that it had on other needles. So it was cumulative within the body based, I think that would be through the vagus nerve stimulation, which then affects the organs, which then affects the gut, which then affects the acupuncture points. Well, there you go. Very cool. Okay, uh, Fred asked about clients using psychotropic, med psychotropic meds when CES is supplied. We already mentioned that. Um, would electroacupuncture on the ear enhance the CES effects? I wouldn't do both at the same time because you're dealing with you know completely separate approaches. But treating in conjunction one with another, sure. Cheryl wants to know, does it matter where on the ear is, is it is attached? Well, the studies in general have been using the earlobes, and that's certainly the most convenient. I don't know that anyone has studied attaching on other points of the ear, which may or may not be as comfortable or produce as good of a connection. So I tend to stick with the earlobes. The other option, though, is that you can use adhesive pads and you can stick it back here behind the mastoid process, kind of in the brainstem area, uh, and that seems to have good results as well. Uh, useful in cases of epilepsy, Tan asks. I don't know. I haven't seen studies there. I would be careful uh, treating an epileptic patient uh, and monitor carefully to make sure that you're not having any kind of a negative effect. Um, Sue asks, do they purchase? I have a oh, go ahead. I have a direct message in between there that I don't want to lose in the process. Go ahead. It, it says, do you have a selection of these devices that you loan to patients or do they purchase them from you? Uh, I, um, I, have, I have a couple that I have available in my clinic that I will use um, as an introduction and during, during the treatment, but if they're purchasing it, then I send them home and I don't I, I know that works so well that I don't feel like I need to send it home and say, hey, try this out and then come back and see if you want to buy it. I just uh, sell it to them Okay. because I already know it works. There you go. <laughs> Daryl wants to know, is there a drop ship option or do we have to buy in bulk? We'll talk about that. But in, in general, uh, you can send patients to purchase directly from us or you can uh, purchase in bulk and provide them in your clinic. And we'll talk about both options. How do you lend this device to patients for their home treatments? Well, Dr. Kimberly just mentioned that she typically doesn't lend them. She typically sells them. Uh, you certainly could lend this out to patients if that's what you wanted to do. Um, Maybe you could rent it to them. <laughs> yeah, you could do that in your, in your office as well. Will it be as effective if you do not prescribe herbs? Uh, yeah, I, you know, depending on the approach, obviously, we think synergistic approaches are the best. And Dr. Kimberly talked about using acupuncture, herbs, and CES together and got phenomenal results. I've seen wonderful results with CES alone. But I would, in the case of a patient who's suffering, I would apply anything at my disposal that can help relieve their suffering. That's my approach. I, I'd like to add to that. Yeah. Obviously, this CES device 
existed and all of the clinical studies existed before we as acupuncturists were even introduced. Uh, I feel like we're sort of pioneers here. It was introduced, we're introducing it to the acupuncture world and telling you, you can do better as an acupuncturist if you have this device and here's why. But it was a standalone all on its own, um, FDA approved and clinically proven. So obviously it works on its own. You're going to, it's going to work better if you use the modalities that you have to offer with it. Excellent. Uh, can we use it as the same at the same time as needling? Yes, you can. Dr. Kimberly just talked about that. Uh, can CES help tinnitus? I've not seen any studies uh, for that, so I don't know. In my own case, I'm a sufferer uh, of tinnitus uh, or tinnitus, whichever you prefer. CES hasn't changed that for me. Uh, is it AC or DC current? It's DC current, but it is um, uh, 100 hertz frequency of direct current. Uh, when do you use pads versus ear clips? That's just down to personal preference. Uh, whatever is most comfortable and easiest for your patient to use, both are effective. Um, Suzette wants to know, Dr. Kimberly, were you recommending the herbs based on AccuGraph or based on TCM or, or maybe based on both? Uh, I go with the TCM pattern and many of the formulas I use are um, recommendations that are in AccuGraph, but it wasn't AccuGraph that made the recommendation for me. I go in myself and decide which pattern works for them. Um, I also use a few formulas that are outside of the scope of what AccuGraph offers. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see one other one. If it works on the vagus nerve, can it work on the trigeminal to treat facial paralysis? Have not seen any good results there either. It tends to be more brain-based than uh, peripheral nerve-based. Uh, can you see? Can you use CES for ADHD? Um, I I saw that it has been studied. It has been listed as improving, so it's certainly worth a try. It's not something that we can list as an indication for obvious reasons with the FDA, but it is um, something you can try in your clinic and see what kind of results you get. Absolutely. So let me go ahead and share this. One thing that's very exciting is that. Like so many other things during COVID, uh, it was hard to get these. There were inventory supply chain disruptions and we're very excited because we now finally have a reliable inventory of these in stock. The manufacturer has worked very diligently to make these things available and we're very pleased about that. We are not the manufacturer. Um, so we've kind of been at their mercy, but we're, we're pleased that things are in good shape now and will be. Uh, for at least the near term. So we have a special kind of launch deal, we're calling it going on, $299 if you buy in a single quantity, available in stock, ready for immediate shipment. Um, comes with uh, video setup and training as well. And as a practitioner, you can purchase two or more units and get wholesale pricing. So there's different bulk pricing tiers, two units, five units, 10 units, and so on. And you can have these in your practice. You can provide them to your patients. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, call us. We don't advertise the wholesale pricing, but call us as a practitioner and we'll be glad to chat with you about that and set you up so that you can purchase in bulk and use these in your practice. Dr. Kimberly has been doing that. She's been buying 15 and 20 at a time and having wonderful results. Um, the uh, purchase link I'm being told will be posted in the video comments. So I assume Shireen's going to take care of that for us. Thank you. We have a website that we've put up, cesrelief.com, where you can get information, where you can purchase, and where you can send patients. Now, as a practitioner, there's a section where you can purchase as a practitioner, no prescription required because you're purchasing it to prescribe. Um, and you can prescribe as long as it's in your scope of practice. So if electrical modalities fall within your scope of practice, like they do for most of us, then you are good to prescribe this. Patients 
need a prescription to purchase it, but we'll help with that. On the website, if it's a patient that you've sent and it says, oh, are you buying this as a patient? Great. Have you been prescribed this by your provider? They just give us the provider's name and number. It's easy for us. We verify, no big deal. And then we ship it direct to the patient. So you can send patients here on your advice and prescription to buy. If people from the general public want to come to us and buy, then we also have the means to evaluate and prescribe if it's appropriate for them. They can fill out an online um, symptom survey and so on, and then we'll work directly with the patient to prescribe and provide it. So it is available to everybody and we follow the rules to make sure that it's been prescribed properly, but it is not um, cumbersome to take care of that. So don't hesitate to recommend that. Our special uh, launch deal, we've been able to secure the pricing through June 17th. Beyond that, we're not sure because the pricing is set by the manufacturer. They kind of have a minimum advertised price, but we can guarantee the price through at least June 17th. And so we're excited about that because um, there's such a great need right now. And I'm really grateful to the manufacturer because when COVID hit, they lowered prices, which is counterintuitive but it was exactly the right thing to do because they've been able to help many, many people. So um, there it is. We'll take any other questions. You can go to cesrelief.com, click buy now if you'd like to get some. And um, from there, let's see if we've had any more questions come in one moment while I stop. There we go. Okay, now I can see the questions again. Ah, okay, Shareen put up the link, thank you. Do you need to change the ear pads between each patient? The ear clips can be sterilized with alcohol um, or you can buy extra sets and you can have sets per individual patient. Um, ideally, this is something that you provide the device to the patient, it is their device, they use their ear clips and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, if people want to buy in the UK, I don't believe they need a prescription. No, if we're shipping overseas, then we don't have to worry about a prescription. And uh, does it affect the efficacy when using ion pumping cords? Uh, I would not, if I had ion pumping cords connected anywhere on the face or head, I would not use CES at the same time, simply because you're going to induce currents in the skin around the head and you could potentially um, send those currents through those cables to other places in the body that uh, they weren't intended to go. So I would just recommend not using cables, at least in the vicinity, while you're using the CES. And I don't see any other questions right now. So that was wonderful. I, we covered an awful lot of material. I know we moved along pretty quickly. If you have more questions, you're welcome to reach out to us. We're glad to answer them and, and provide any help we need to. Um, if you are interested in referring patients to us, rather than having stock on hand, we do have a referral program that you can sign up for where you can prescribe and refer patients. They can purchase directly from us and you can have a commission from the patients that you refer to us. So uh, feel free to reach out to us about that too. We're glad to help. Oh, um, Hi. I, oh go ahead. Um, so I'm in Canada and I purchased one of your um, machines and I used it with my patients, but in order to have it sent here, it was gonna cost me almost as much as the machine um, to get with all the duties and stuff. So if I refer a patient and they're purchasing it as a patient versus me purchasing it as a practitioner, do they still have those same um, duties and stuff that because it's a business to business versus business to person? You know, I'm not sure how Canada handles that. Um, I do know that, yeah, the international shipping, even though it's just right over the border, it adds all kinds of unnecessary expense. And in terms of the import duties in Canada, I'm just not sure what they do. I'm not up on the Canadian import laws, unfortunately. Um, I presume that they would have to pay 
import duty on that unless there's a medical device exemption. So you might want to check into that and see. Sorry, I can't tell you more. Um, but good question and thank you for asking. Uh, I have a background question that came up. Oh yeah. It says, are treatments only 30 minutes or longer? So when you turn the device on, it runs for, um, I believe you, it's 20 when you, you first turn it on, 30, right? 30, 45 or uh, continuous. Or continuous. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just push the button to choose the the length of time you want, and then it runs and it shuts off at the end. Uh, can it be used to treat depression? Um, it has been FDA approved for treating depression or FDA uh, cleared for the indications of depression. There's been a lot of studies on treating depression with it, and it shows a high degree of effectiveness. But I have to say, because the FDA has made indications that they're going to be changing um, what we're allowed to recommend it for, uh, we are not making any claims about depression. The claims that we're making are for anxiety and insomnia. You can use it in whatever way you see fit, though, based on the research and the fact that it's been used in that way for 50 years. That's fine. <laughs> do you accept PayPal? Yes, we do. Um, Wendy says duties and fees apply to anyone. Get dinged for the same fees. I ship to Canada all the time. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but true. Does it help at all with stroke patients? I don't know. I have not seen any studies on stroke recovery. That's a good question. Um, somebody says continuous treatment for hours. Does the brain accommodate? I, you know, I would not recommend continuous treatment for hours. I've never found it necessary to go beyond 30 minutes. And so although it does have a continuous setting, it's not a setting that I use. So good question. All right. Well, it's uh, it's been a great webinar. I appreciate everybody coming and, and spending some time with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, above all, please keep getting people the help they need. Please keep doing the good that you can in the world. We are so grateful for the work that you do and the, and the fact that we can participate in whatever way we can. Oh, Mary says, can it be used with Parkinson's? It's not indicated for Parkinson's. I've not seen studies there either. Different structure of the brain, unfortunately. So with that, we'll go ahead and close. Thank you, everybody. Dr. Kimberly, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, Thank it's been you. a pleasure to have you, and we'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.